Hello, hello, everyone. We will give everyone just a few more moments to, to join in. See, we already have a good number of people rolling in. So we will get started here in just a second. Alrighty, well, I see some people joining in, so I will go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Summer Stockton, and I am with the Shelby Report, uh, and we are very excited to have Toshiba and CBS North Star with us today um, to sort of give us some case studies to reveal how to drive success in our gross rent. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping roles to start off. Um, everyone is in a listen-only mode. Um, but we will be having a question and answer session at the end. Uh, so if you have any questions during the course of the program, please use the questions or the chat feature on your control panel uh, to type in your question and we'll make sure we get to it at the end of the presentation. Uh, but with that, I will turn it over to Steve. All right, thank you so much, Sar. Uh, Thank you, everybody. I've got uh, Jeremy Julian, our uh, CRO and founder of CBS Custom Business Solutions, um, here today to talk to us, as well as Michael Gartside from Toshiba Global Commerce Solutions. He's our Global Services Director for PaaS and Client Success. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today on this webinar for the Shelby Report. I think we've got a really exciting topic for our attendees so let's go ahead and jump right in if we will so <clears throat> i think what we want to talk about here uh guys is basically you know how we can help restaurants and grocers combine that experience as a melded group of grocerants if you will so grocery stores as we know have been trying to figure out how to get more people in the door and one of the ways they've been able to do that is to offer restaurant type of services in their uh, stores themselves you know whether it's prepackaged foods or hot foods from a grill or um, even a salad bar you know something as simple as that to be able to pick up something very quickly uh, one meal maybe a second meal that they could bring home put in the refrigerator or something like that so you know i think we see there's a lot of untapped potential there for grocers to expand their experience for uh, their customers. So, you know, Jeremy, I think you've seen a couple of our partners and some of our clients today do that. Do you have, you know, an example you can maybe talk to a little bit about uh, one that you've been working on recently? Yeah, and I know we'll talk more about it throughout the conversation, Steve, but um, I mean, at the end of the day, when we're talking to retailers, the, the big thing is, is how do they create a frictionless commerce, you know, even though it's a buzzword, it's the frictionless commerce idea of how do I go in and, and get more, you know, time is the un, you know, non-renewable resource that everybody has the same limited amount of time. And so how do I maximize the time that I'm going to feed my family or feed myself? And so grocery oftentimes is, is a large percentage of a household food spend, but if I can also double dip and get a hot prepared meal and not have to worry about making it at home, the grocers and retailers that we're talking to are, are creating these hybrids all the time. The flip Correct. side, restaurants are doing the same. They're having non-prepared foods, you know, that, that are packaged goods oftentimes. And so we'll talk a lot today about how the Toshiba solution along with our, our solution have tied those things together in, I don't know, I think we've got four or five case studies that we'll talk through on today's call. Okay. Sounds good. So, you know, one of the things that I've seen in talking to our retailers, um, you know, whether they're grocery, whether they're specialty, hospitality, any of these, there's a lot of challenges that they face in terms of maintaining their hardware, software, services, maintenance, everything, right? So they have, you know, some of the older, more established retailers have, you know, aging infrastructure that they need to manage. They've got, you know, applications that are very old. And they're really concerned with the system availability of their um, of their products in the stores themselves. So they're worried about system uptime, 
they want to make sure that you know there's interoperability with their hardware and their software so you know there's a lot of disparate things that they see out um in you know stores whether it's you know a restaurant itself like you just mentioned here jeremy or an established grocer that you know is trying to expand and offer more restaurant type of um, meals and, and uh, takeaways so one of the things we talk to our our customers about at Toshiba is you know how do we reduce risk how do we mitigate and help you plan for a 5 10 15 year life cycle of your hardware or uh, your your plans for um, your infrastructure at the point of sale so um, you know, we're seeing it in the news every day, the shrink that, you know, people are experiencing when we talk about convenience uh, and gas. You know, you see people you have a lot of shrink in terms of people walking away with some of that merchandise. And how do we develop loss prevention type of solutions and other things that will help mitigate that that security risk that they face today? So with that, you know, <clears throat> we understand there's a lot of different grocery pain points that, you know, our customers are facing on a day-to-day -day, uh, day -day basis. So, you know, Jeremy, what are the things that you've run across with, with some of these things that you've seen with, with groceries in your experience with CBS? I, I think going back to, to the point that you brought up earlier, Steve, it's, it's they're trying to figure out how to get people back into the store and to engage with the brand, but they don't necessarily, if they don't create a good experience for the customer, they're not going to engage with it. If it's too exactly. hard for the operators, if it's too hard for the customer to do these things, they're not going to. They're not going to go. If it's easier to go run through the drive-through at a, a, a big box restaurant brand and then go to the grocery store, they're going to do that. And so, from an operator side, it's reconciliation. Is does the tech play well together? It's managing the multiple price tiers because if you've got to manage them in two different systems, which a lot of people that do have a full scale restaurant inside of their brand have a different piece of tech and the customer, it's almost like they're going into two different stores. We've all exactly. been into one of those grocery stores that you have to go to the deli counter, ring up your sandwich, pay for your sandwich, and then go take your cart of groceries to the front. We built it in. And so the, the, again, back to the frictionless commerce. The other piece that I would say is, is the digitization Everybody wants to be able to do everything from their mobile, whether that's exactly. check out for their groceries or, or order their food ahead while they're coming through. And so these are the pain points that people are trying to solve. Because again, if you don't get the consumers what they want, they'll stop coming. If it's not a good experience, not just the food, but the full on experience, whether it's the ordering experience, the payment experience, the <clears> pickup <throat> experience, the food, it's all part of the equation. And again, we've seen people do it and not do it well. And we've seen people do it and do it well. And so a lot of times uh, we're, we're doing these things. And then back to your loss prevention, I think it's uh, the reconciliation. When you have two different systems, you've got two different sets of books that you need to close. Part right. of what we'll talk a little bit about later on is, is we've got an integrated solution that, that ties those two solutions together where you can have a single source of truth for both your prices, for your items, for your guests, as well as your, your end of day closing procedures are all gonna be exactly the same regardless of whether you rang it up in the restaurant, the grocery portion, or you're in the grocery store. Yeah, and I think you brought up a really good point in terms of mobile ordering, right? So consumers, I think at this point, are pretty comfortable about ordering, <clears throat> whether it's some simple groceries to be able to pick up as they drive through at the location, or even ordering prepared food for them to pick up. So your point of you know maybe having two locations to go to, like a restaurant and then a grocery, well, you know, if they can combine that experience so that there's one location and you can get everything at one time, it makes it much more efficient for the consumer and therefore uh, repeat visits will happen more often because they're used to having a more efficient experience at the at the grocer itself. So that, that's a great point that you bring up there. Absolutely. And one other thing, I guess, back to your previous slide, Steve, that I want to, before you get too far into sure. this is, is um, I think that the marrying of your software solution along with your hardware solution and the flexibility of that is also critical because again, you can't create the right guest experience unless the technology is there to do that. And so whether it's at the front of the store, it's mobile in, you know, in the center of the store when people are walking around, or it's at the prepared foods area, you've got to have technology that's flexible that can allow you those capabilities 
and reliable. Because again, if I go into the grocery on, and I go to order food and the POS terminal is down, or I can't go onto my mobile app and, and do these things, it ends up killing the guest experience and people will give you a second chance maybe, but they likely won't give you a third chance. So you exactly. gotta figure out how to do it right. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great point because you know we will talk a little bit about that end-to-end -end type of solution that Toshiba offers today a little bit later on in the presentation. But uh, I think a grocer or a restaurant wants to make sure that you know they're working with an organization that's global in nature, has a lot of depth of experience, be able to create custom solutions just for what that one individual retailer wants to do. And you know we've got a long history of working with uh, large box grocers as well as you know many restaurants um, across not only North America but globally as well. So, you know, I mentioned that, you know, we're working together and we've been working together for a very long time, as you all know, Jeremy. Um, you know, our passion at Toshiba Global Commerce Solutions is retail. You know, we're devoted to working on a custom solution that makes sure it works for that grocer. So, you know, we've been, you know, we're legacy IBM retail store solutions. So, you know, we've been in the business for well over 50 years of, you know, supporting retailers, whether it's, you know, general merchandise, whether it's grocers, whether it's hospitality, specialty, convenience, whatever it is, we've got a long history of doing that. And partnering with a, a valued uh, reseller such as yourself, um, Jeremy at CBS, we want to make sure that we work together to, to find the right solution for these um, customers. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think part of why I get the privilege to come hang out is this because we've worked together for almost 30 years. Um, and really, we've we've looked at the solutions that are going into these places. And even though Steve and his counterparts might look at me and go, why did you put that there? Um, or me or, or somebody else on our team, at the end of the day, you guys create flexible hardware that enables the software to do what the guests need to do, um, in addition to some of the software that you guys produce. From a CBS perspective, <clears throat> We are a, a group that ultimately puts the customer at the center of the, the 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 center of the transaction. They need to understand, and they need to be able to do what they they want to do. Not all grocers are the same. Not all restaurants are the same. And so they need to be able to make their guest experience unique. And our job is to enable the hardware and software to allow them to do that. Some places want to do self service. Some places don't. Some people want to do, you know, they want a full you know, fine dining experience, some people are looking to do something less. Again, we'll talk later about one brand that's got five different operating modes inside of one store. They've got wow. counter service, they've got um, pickup, they've got third party delivery, they've got regular grocery, they've got a full service Italian restaurant inside of a grocery store. Um, wow. You know, and again, we'll talk about those things, but without a partner that understands what they're trying to do as a business and then pivoting and whether it be writing software, working with the hardware provi providers like Toshiba to drive those solutions, they're not going to find it. And so our goal is to put those customers and work with your vision of what you want your retail establishment to look like. And then we'll continue to pivot and modify and change to meet your needs. Exactly. That's, that's a great summation of the value that you bring to the table for the customers at, at the local level that you know Toshiba may not be able to reach. So that's a great way of putting that, Jeremy, so thanks. It's almost like I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> so team, what I wanna do is just basically kind of touch upon what our um, design strategy is here at Toshiba Global Commerce Solutions. So we wanna be sure that we deliver the highest availability for our products as well as the lowest total cost of ownership. We understand that grocers and restaurants have a very thin margin of profit that they're managing to. So they wanna make sure that they manage their CapEx and their OpEx as, as closely as possible. So <clears throat> we design our solutions so that they're serviceable, they're reliable, they're usable from, a, from an ergonomics perspective, and they're flexible. So we have a, a lot of different choices in terms of the technology that you have available to you, whether it's an all-in-one point of sale uh, dis, uh, system or whether it's a distributed model, if it's a kiosk, if it's a self-service, self-checkout type of environment, we've got a lot of different um, 
experiences that we can help design for our retailers and our customers. <clears throat> One thing we'll touch on a little bit later on is the retail hardened message that we deliver for our customers every day. And it's basically we go above and beyond our testing of our competition. So best example I can usually give is our temperature testing. This industry standard industry, uh, temperature test goes from zero degrees centigrade to 30. We go from zero to 40, and why do we do that? We do it because we're installing our systems in a wide variety of extreme uh, environments, whether it's in a tropical situation in LATAM or whether it's in, in Canada and the Nordics and it's very cold areas. So we want to ensure that our systems are ruggedized and as my friend Jeremy would say, built like a tank. So we wanted to be able to deliver on that promise and that's how we designed for retail at Toshiba. So I want to kind of talk a little bit now, Jeremy, about some of the use cases that we see with these um, with these grocerants today in terms of, you know, buy online, pick up in store, things like that. And some of the things that you think are really what kind of picks your ear up when you start having those conversations with some of these grocerants. Uh, I mean, the grocery on side of things, it's it, the people that get it. I don't want to say get it. It's I, I think it's one of those things that when they understand the value proposition of having higher margin items, being able to be produced, reasons to drive traffic, how do I now um, engage with the consumer to get them to, like we talked about earlier, do one one stop shopping. They've got dinner, you know, prepared dinner. On my way home from soccer practice, I can pick up dinner, but I can also do my normal grocery shopping on my way out. I can have it as a destination. You know, I could go shopping with my family, um, let my wife go shop. I can hang out and have a meal with my kids if I want to. Um, there's the places that are in high density, the grocery stores that are in high density. They want to be a lunch spot and they want to be that active lunch spot that people can come to and get a sandwich or get a pizza or get some fried chicken. Because oftentimes they have they have these products and their margins are significantly higher than restaurants. So from a margin stack perspective, that's that's huge. On the tech side, unfortunately, they don't necessarily think about what the difference is between a prepared foods or a make ready food and a grocery, you know, guests don't want a sandwich that's been sitting there for six hours that right. has mayonnaise and lettuce and tomatoes and ketchup or, you know, whatever, ketchup, ketchup on a sandwich, probably not that, but um, if they don't want the sandwich that's been prepared at, at nine in the morning at lunchtime because it's not the same quality that I might get at a sandwich shop. And so figuring out how to customize those, um, those solutions for the guests have them ready so you have hot food hot cold cold food cold where and when they want it is what we've been helping them come around to because they want to be able to be in the space but they don't necessarily always understand and comprehend because they've always thought about that the second piece that i think in grocerants that people underestimate is the fact that in a traditional restaurant um, food service application you can have essentially unlimited prices for an item so you can have that hamburger, and if it's ordered on DoorDash, if it's $9.99 in store, it might be $12.99 on DoorDash. Right. In a grocery store point of sale, historically, a can of green beans is the same cost for a can of green beans, whether I order them online or I order them in store. Whereas right. most, you know, most restaurants, 99% of the restaurants, if you were to go to their own online ordering menu and you go to DoorDash's menu, there's a price difference. Um, exactly. You know, for those listeners yep. out there that didn't know that, guess what? They're getting charged to get that food to you through DoorDash, and thus you're paying as the consumer a bit more. And so those capabilities are are huge. On the convenience side, it's a similar conversation. We've all seen convenience stores. I happen to live in Texas. There's, you know, the racetracks and the and the QTs of the world. They continue to expand. Every time they remodel, they're constantly adding additional prepared foods to get you to stop and not just get gas but get you to stop and have more of your spend inside of that and so how do i make it seamless ordering at the pump ordering from my phone when i'm driving up to get gas so that the food is ready ordering from a kiosk that's exactly what i was going to talk about you know if you go to a grocery store and you start shopping and you think to yourself you know i'm, I'm kind of hungry now is there a kiosk local in the in the grocery aunt that I could just walk up to, put my order in, continue shopping in the grocery store, know that that's going to be ready in five to ten minutes, and then circle back around? So one of the Absolutely. things that's 
So yeah, and again, we'll talk we'll talk about it in the in the specific restaurants, but we've got a restaurant today that's taking and allowing not even a kiosk. Well, the kiosk is awesome. We we also have a way that you can order. You could post QR codes throughout the store. You could Very scan funny. it from your phone, order your sandwich, order your pizza. You know, um, we've all probably frequented Costco in the past, the red phone that's in the middle of the Costco store that you used to order pizza from years ago. Like yeah. we have that solution, but it's from a mobile phone where it pulls up and miraculously yeah. we can have it ask you for your phone number and text you when the food is ready. So now you don't have to stand around the deli counter waiting for your food. You know that it's ready and they can even put it in a hot locker for you so that you can go pick it up and scan a QR code on your phone to pick it up at the hot locker or the cold locker if you wanted to. So all of those solutions exist, whether you're in convenient, you're in restaurant, you're in grocery, the software allows you that capability powered, you know, along with the power of the hardware and, and making sure that the traditional retail experience is seamless for those guests is, is part of what we're doing. Exactly. Hey, Steve, let me uh, jump in there a minute too. Sure. As, you know, as, I'm, as I'm looking through that and absolutely agree with what Jeremy's saying, right? Did you really got to cater to that individual customer? And, right. you know, as I'm looking at this, my lens is a little bit different. I, I kind of look at what Jeremy's doing, what we're doing from a hardware perspective is that's the happy path when things are going well everything's right. up and running. So so my view is from the serviceability, the supportability of that equipment um, and making sure that, that it's up and running. So that, you know, proactive web based services is a, is a service that monitors those, that equipment. So if I'm looking at these three areas, I'm really thinking about, you know, a convenience store, probably, you know, most restaurants, they have a, a limited number of point of purchases. And when I think about, you know, a grocery store and, restaurants then you know it's 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 a store within a store and so i may want to run in and just grab whatever that is and get out and if that registers down then i've got to go stand in line and, and so there, there are other you know scenarios that may not uh play out nicely and so that monitoring of that understanding um you know not only if it's down but there are um monitors in the equipment that are, are telling us and giving us clues something's going on and, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later right but, but it, it, it's not just the i'm up or down and what what's going on but that preventative maintenance and and understanding that that it's in a situation where tomorrow or a week from now it may uh, it may be going down and, and we can get ahead of it by monitoring that equipment as well and, and that's a great point mike because you know these places may only have one or two point of sale locations and if one or two of those go down they may be completely down so i know our our past services our, our proactive availability services a solution is a great way to help maintain you know 100 percent uptime you know 99.99 percent .99 whatever it is so we can anticipate any potential issues and address them before they even become an issue and that, that's you know we'll talk about that more later as you just mentioned but that's really a critical point with with any of these uh, segments in terms of being able to support their customers so well i think I'll, as you're going to the next slide steve I'll, I'll just say everybody's trying to figure out how to increase wallet share because right. it's been getting eaten up by all of these different people because the hybrid model continues to to get um, to pivot. And so ensuring that you can take that retail transaction to Michael's point, because if your POS is down and you can't take payment, you can't take the order, you know, you're stuck. So exactly. everybody's trying to figure out how do I go up the value chain within people's household budget every day, every week, every month. And sometimes that looks like adding prepared food. Sometimes that looks like adding retail. Sometimes that looks like adding fuel. And without the right technology solutions that are available and reliable, none of it matters. Exactly. And that's really, you know, the, the lowest TCO that we measure across all of our solutions, whether it's you know, general merchandise, whether it's convenience, whether it's restaurants, grocers, we want to make sure all of our systems and solutions are reliable. We want to make sure it's easy to manage. We want to make sure that they're versatile. So everything that we've been talking about so far uh, during our conversation today just reinforces that whole peace of mind for, um, you know, a, a grocer, on, restaurant, grocer, whomever it is that want to make sure that their technology 
is going to be up and running. It's rugged, it's durable, it's reliable, and that we're monitoring it and, and making sure it stays that way for the retailer. So, um, you know, these are just some of the proof points that we, you know, constantly monitor as we, you know, put our solutions into place with our retailers as well as working with, you know, value partners like custom business solutions. So with that, yeah. I kind of want to just talk one quick second here about what our total solution portfolio looks like. And I talked a little bit about hardware, I talked software, I talked services, right? So these are just some of the things, the proof points under each one of those categories. So not only do we have, you know, hardware point of sale systems like a, a, an all-in-one or if it's a distributed model, we've also got a full line of single and dual station printers as well as self-service options as well. You know, we talked a little bit about the software. You know, I know North Star is a is a you know a gold star in the industry for our um, restaurant and, and grocers, but we also offer additional um, solutions from Toshiba, such as Alara, such as Ace, such as Jet, things like that that really enhance the experience for the retailer itself. You know, you talk a little bit about being able to order online, Jeremy, a little bit earlier and be able to take payments and take different types of payments. So people are using Apple Pay today, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, you know, you have your Visa and, and MasterCard payment systems as well. So we are constantly working with our retailers to ensure that we're able to support any type of pay that, that a customer wants to use. And, you know, again, to what Michael talked about, about a little bit earlier, wall-to-wall -wall maintenance, PaaS, you know, augmented reality training for their associates. You know, these are the things that we're constantly thinking about, making sure that we have the right offerings for those that want to be able to support their customers on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, you talked a little bit about the, the, um, the case studies. Right, and I think this is a great point where you know you've got a great story to tell here, Jeremy. I want to give you the time to really talk a little bit about this for our our viewers here today, and you know understand how you've been able to help each one of these brands, you know, develop a much better and robust solution for their customer set. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me that opportunity, and and I'm not. You guys can read the screen, so I don't necessarily need to go through that. But the biggest one. You know, and I talked about it earlier. The the photograph on the top right is a full service restaurant attached to a very high density, high traffic mall in Southern California. Um, happens to be in the Irvine spectrum for anybody that, that's aware of where Irvine's at. This is a full Neapolitan style Italian restaurant. They make pizzas, pastas, and it's a full sit down restaurant. They've got about 80 seats, 90 seats, plus a full bar with wine and full drinks. And it's attached to a specialty grocery store that has high-end products from all over the world. It also happens to have four other, and this is Newfound Market, it's part of the Bristol Farms family of restaurants and uh, grocery stores out of, based out of Southern California. They have four other walk-up restaurants, a sushi bar, a um, sandwich place that does Nashville hot chicken sandwiches. There's a vegetarian place, and I don't remember the fourth one, maybe a burger place. They also have a deli counter where you can get prepared foods um, and make deli, you know, sliced meats and those kind of things, as well as full deli sandwiches. And then that picture in the lower right is a full cafe. And that cafe is like any other Starbucks where you can get coffee, you can get any kind of coffee drinks, you can get, um, uh, there's a cold case there in the front where you can pick up fruits and pastries. And all of that is tied into their end of day checkout. And so fantastic, you know, like all in one solution. The big thing that I talked about earlier was a pain point and it really goes to who we are as partners and who we are as an organization from the software side. This property happens to be just a few miles from our home office in Southern California. So our team frequents going to lunch there. And one day they happen to walk by the deli counter. And like most deli counters at any kind of busy grocery store, there's a line. You go up, you pull a ticket, or you get a number, and you go you go wait to talk to the guy behind the deli counter to order what it is that you want. And then historically, you wait, and you might go three feet away, five feet away, 10 feet away to go to the cheese counter or whatever else, but you stay really close to that deli counter because you want to make sure that nobody takes your roast beef that you had cut or nobody takes your turkey. Um, 
This deli counter happens to also do full prepared foods. They've got brisket, they've got um, they've got you know turkey sandwiches, they've got you know like pasta dishes. So it's a full, almost full restaurant in addition to being able to get sliced meats and cheeses. And so we came to them, and the and the box on the lower right there is is order prep and text to the guest. And we changed the ordering mode where I now come up, I take my number and I, I'd like a half pound of turkey, a half pound of roast beef and, a, and you know, the, the, the pasta plate, you know, for lunch. Okay, so I do that. Hello, you know, Mr. Customer, can I get your phone number for you? And then they walk through this whole process of, hey, Steve, as soon as your food's ready, we'll send you a text. Go enjoy the rest of your shopping experience. You don't have to worry. Nobody's gonna take your food. We'll make sure that you get that. They went right. from having 20 to 30 people standing in front of that deli counter in this busy times to almost no one because they know they can now go finish their shopping experience. Right. It solves two problems. One, now the guests can now go spend more money. The consumers can now go spend more money. The second thing is, is now there's no longer the customer that walks up and goes, oh, I was going to go order a sandwich, but now there's 30 people waiting in front of me. I no longer, and they could have already ordered and they could all be just waiting for their food to be prepared. But that, I've had that experience as a consumer as I walk up and I go, I'm not dealing with that. I got no time on my lunch hour to go deal with that. And so the throughput and the amount of sales spend that we've increased within that deli counter has been huge. The integration, just, which is, oh, it, sorry. It sounds, oh. Like just, it sounds like just the efficiency of that alone can help drive additional revenue for each one of these uh, places. Unequivocally, unequivocally. They, they drove, I mean, they drove from, from the first few weeks and again, we happen to just walk in and go, why is everybody standing around? And, and we're like, hey, guys, if, if we could do something like this, would this help you? And they're like, yes, please. Can we do that? And while it took a little bit of, of you know, staff training, it was a huge boon to their to their top line sales, to their customer satisfaction. They were able to drive that. And then the second piece that that was really, really, really critical from a from a commerce perspective for this customer is if you're working in the food service application and you want to go pay at the front of the store or if you're working in the grocery store and you want to pay at the um at the the prepared foods area those things needed to be able so i needed to be able to take a a, a bottle of italian you know italian soda and take it out of the grocery grocery area and ring it up on the restaurant point of sale along with that that um that pasta plate and historically, you couldn't do that with the full prep that says pasta plate with no Parmesan coming in through third party delivery. And so we've allowed the capability through some software engineering to allow the grocery store to operate like a grocery store, the restaurant to operate like a restaurant, but the two sets of sales can sync. I can go to a self checkout in an ACE world and take that sandwich and scan it. I can take a, that bottle of Italian soda to that deli counter and ring it up on a scanner and allow you to pay frictionless from anywhere in the store, from any piece of technology, um, really ultimately allowing the guests to do anything and everything that they need to do. This really started about five and a half years ago with a customer that kind of came and said, we've got this problem, how do we solve it? And while we've done a lot in the last five and a half years, it's really been this iteration. And every one of these brands that are down across the bottom has done some portion of this. Then they add on third-party delivery. Then they add on catering to the to the office buildings that are across the street. Then they add on staff ordering with discounts and meal plans and those kind of things. So these are all things that have continued to grow. Um, we can talk about each one of them, but I think those are two critical pieces that people need to understand is, is how do we increase throughput and increase sales? How do we increase guest satisfaction? And how do we make it frictionless for the consumer so that they can order anywhere and pay anywhere without having to worry about, oh, do I need to go to that line or do I need to go to this line? It doesn't matter. You can go anywhere you want. We've all had that experience where you walk up and you go, can you order this? And they go, well, you have to pay. It's like, well, no, 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 I'm still in the same building. Why do I have to go pay you and then right. not be able to go transfer my transaction to somewhere else? So, Right. It's it's all about transaction efficiency, right? And which eventually leads to increased foot traffic. Mm -hmm. The more and more efficient you can have a transaction at the point of sale, whether it's like you said, it's front or in the rear or in the restaurant or another location at a kiosk, the quicker you can make it for any of us because, you know, nobody likes to stand in line. I mean, I don't care if you're shopping in a grocery store, if you're shopping at a fashion retailer, wherever it is, you don't want to stand in line. So if there's ways you can make that more efficient for somebody, you're going to 
you know, put in the back of their mind, hey, I'm going to come here again because this was an easy transaction for me to, to do. And, you know, I'm already, there's a certain level of brand loyalty, store loyalty, restaurant loyalty that people have. And if you deliver on the promise of making it easy every time, you're going to seek repeat business. But the more, I don't want to say roadblocks, but the more hurdles you put in front of people, the more they're going to remember that and say, I, you know, I don't really want to deal with that hassle because it was so tough for me to do it in the past. So it sounds like with, with these locations, you were really able to increase the efficiency for these, um, these restaurants and, and retailers. Yeah. One last thing that I, that I want to talk about, and I forgot to talk about it just earlier, Steve, is the, the ability to line bust, whether it be grocery or um, now you've got mobile POS that you can take just about anywhere mobile orders, mobile payments. So now the capability to go do that curbside pickup, you know, so I ordered it online and I go, go do curbside, but I'm like, oh, I forgot so-and-so was gonna be home. Can you throw another burger on that order for me? How do you do that today in that curbside pickup? You can't, you gotta go take the order on a piece of paper, go run inside, go punch it in a POS. Now we've got the ability to do mobile order and mobile pay from anywhere in the store. And that, again, frictionless capability for people to be able to do that in a reliable way creates brand loyalty and creates foot traffic that that is unquestionable. Exactly. Exactly. So let's let's go ahead. Those are all great examples. And we'll continue to touch upon some of these um, case studies that we've talked about here. But I want to go ahead and kind of move on a little bit and, you know, talk a little bit about CBS North Star, you know, you talked a little bit about the history of the company here, Jeremy. Um, you know, you talk about some of the key benefits and everything. Where have you seen the greatest success with CBS and where do you see the growth of the organization going forward and, and how you can add value for some of our retailers or restaurants? I mean, I think we've talked about it throughout the whole conversation is, is our key benefits is we're entrepreneurial. We understand, even though we deal with some of the biggest brands in the country, we understand that, that you know what, not all, not all systems are created equal. N not, everybody wants to be able to use technology to, to change the brand perception of what it is that they're doing. And so um, helping them understand that is critical. And so for us, we are we are only successful when our customers are successful and our partners are successful. And so it goes to the core of who we are as an organization. We are constantly listening. We are constantly out in the field, going and doing site visits, um, going and talking to people about what's working, what's not working, where's your vision at? We, as a brand, we read people's 10Ks if they're publicly traded to hear what their CEOs are saying they wanna do as a retailer. And then we go out, whether it be to NRF, the NRA show, the multi-unit restaurant technology show, um, talking to partners like you guys at Toshiba to say, they need this. Steve, how do we get that for them? And then we bring them into the conversation. And so those are the things that we do. And we use the depth of our knowledge and understanding as well as our technical capabilities, whether that be on the hardware engineering side with you guys or other partners or the software engineering side that we've got a very talented team that knows this stuff really, really well. We work in partnership to create those solutions that are gonna ultimately drive the throughput and, and allow them to, uh, to build the guest experience that people want. Cool, that sounds like a great approach for a lot of these retailers and I know you guys have been a great success over these last 30 years. So with that, Jeremy, what I'd like to do at this point is kind of pivot a little bit and talk a little bit about the retail hard message that I touched upon earlier with our products. So, um, you know, for the viewers here today, all of our hardware solutions that we offer from Toshiba are designed, built and tested for, you know, different elements in, in the food uh, environment. So, you know, we have back kitchen operations that we help support. We've got uh, kiosks, we've got self checkout, we've got, you know, all in one point of sale. So, you know, some of the things that we do to test on these, we do electrostatic discharge, we do dust and lint, we do uh, liquid tests, as you can see there in the picture itself. You know, we do touch testing for the capacitive touch on the screens so you can ensure that it'll support up to 10,000 touches without failure. You know, we have a, a lot of different type of peripheral offerings such as barcode scanners that you can use on the side of the display itself. You've got fingerprint readers, we've got security type of solutions. We've also got um, many others that you'll see here in the portfolio, but we want to make sure that whatever total solution that we implement for a grocerant is easy to deploy, 
easy to manage, it's flexible, and best of all, like Michael talked a little bit about here in a little bit, is, is it's a very serviceable solution as well. So with that, I want to kind of give Mike a little bit of time here and talk a little bit about proactive availability services as well as everything that that really accomplishes. So Mike, if you could take a few minutes for the viewers here. Sure, thanks, Steve. So um, I'll probably need to, to, to give a little definition of what really proactive availability services is. And, and that is our kind of the feedback loop, right? Everything that Steve just talked about, everything that Jeremy's talking about, again, that's all the happy path. It's then how is it really acting in the real world? And so the our wall-to-wall -wall services, we, we're not limited to uh, servicing Toshiba equipment. We service anything and everything within the store. Um, and, and with that in mind, proactive availability services is a wall-to-wall -wall and moving to a wall-to-wall -wall solution that covers things beyond point of sale. You know, that, that's our bread and butter. That's what we do every day, but that's not where we're stopping. Um, you know, we're, we're looking not only at the hardware itself, but the application layer. We all know that those two things have to, you know, be connected. They can't ring up an item and print the receipt and, and the, everything work normally if both of those things aren't working. And so, so we're monitoring both sides of the house and we're able to do that, um, you know, with, with agents that are on, on the, the registers, we've implemented uh, daily scales so we can actually see if those are up and running. Um, we've got UPS battery backups. So things that are, you know, may not even be being used on a regular basis, but when it's an emergency, you want them to be up. Yes, and so, definitely. And so, it, and it's not just, you know, we, we, we've built the infrastructure to behind the scenes take care of things automatically. So the store doesn't have to call in to a help desk to log a call that then gets dispatched to a technician. Um, we're doing that all kind of, like I said, behind the scenes, there is a UI. So I can see my enterprise. I can see all of my restaurants. I can see all of my grocery stores. I can see within each one of them and see each one of the registers and if they're up and down from a, a corporate location. So, so you, and you can, can monitor that and, and see how, how those um, uh, facilities are, are, are running. Um, many times, you know, when you're relying on a, a store uh, associate, employee to call something in, they're like, oh, I've got another one. I'll call that in later. And, and then later becomes never. And now uh, the, the other register, right? If I'm in that store within a store situation goes down and now I have no registers, that creates an emergency. Now it's a critical 7-1. I've got to rush somebody out there to get that back up for them. So that's kind of you know, what we're trying to accomplish and are accomplishing through our proactive availability services uh, solution within our wall-to-wall -wall, wall -wall organization. You don't have to have wall to wall to use paths. It's it's standalone and can can be used independently. Looking, you know, we, we pulled out some some use cases specifically that we've seen. I really want to focus on the last two because I think they they apply uh, very well to what we've been talking about today. So, um, you know, I, I talked about that automation piece um, and and getting things replaced before the store ever calls them in. And and so we've had you know feedback from retailers that are using the solution. Um, in most cases, the, the technician checks in with a manager, says, hey, I'm here, um, I'm here, and I'm, I'm here to, to, to fix the printer on register two. And um, we got feedback that, you know, that, that manager actually called their home office and said, whatever you're doing, don't stop, because I was literally getting ready to call that in. So we, we were there, ready to fix it before they'd even reported it. So I think a great uh, success story, um, you know, and, and what we're delivering there from a PaaS perspective. And then, you know, that proactive monitoring. We talked about the, 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 the monitors that are built into the hardware that are giving us information, really how they're being used in the real world. Steve talked about how, you know, we do everything we can on the front end to make them retail hardened. You know, what does that really look like? So we've got sensors for CPU temperature. Um, we talked about that, fan speed, things like that. So. We had a situation where um, in the deli at a grocery store, their register CPU temperature was was increasing. It was above what we would have expected. And so we, we saw that proactively. We went out and, and sure enough, it was right beside the heater for where the chicken is. 
And it's like, you know, so now you can make some decisions. I, can I move that over? Can I, can I give it, you know, maybe I can't completely move it out of the way, but you know, we can look at that and say, okay, well now that's, that's normal, right? This is the way it's going to be, but are there ways we can, can adjust and help really protect the investment of the hardware that's been purchased, keeping it up and running, keeping it and where it doesn't go down. Right. So, so those are some good use cases, I think, um, for, for what we're doing in the past space. You and I had a conversation the other day, Mike, and you were mentioning that one of the examples that you had is one of our grocers was tending to use a single lane more than their other lanes. And because of that, they were overusing the printer and it was therefore wearing out a little bit more quickly. Right. And I believe your team went out to that grocer and said, hey, <clears throat> maybe you want to kind of switch up your lanes from time to time to help extend the life of your printer. And it wasn't even a case of, hey, we want to sell you a new printer. We instead went out there with the message of, we think you can extend the life of your current products longer if you manage yep. different lanes. And therefore, to me as a retailer, I've been like, wow, you know, they're caring more about my systems and my products rather than trying to sell me something else and i think that's you know that's a great yeah. story for a lot of these folks to hear absolutely kind of taking that a little a, a step further right if we're talking about uh planning and budgeting for the next year that same type of information can be used in different areas of the business i focused on kind of that that service ability that supportability but you know i can see that um to your point, maybe this this printer has been used more. We can rotate the tires. That's kind of how we re refer to that, right? I can rotate my tires and make sure they're aging at the same rate. Typically, when a retailer goes out and, and does a campaign to replace a device, they don't go, oh, I'm only going to do this one. I'm only going to do this one. They do the whole store. And, and the whole store hasn't aged and isn't being used at the same rate. Flipping them, too, also may, you know, make it where I have fewer um trips to the store to service things, right? So I'm gonna, my, my, my average time for visits may, may be um, increased as a result of that. But the, you know, from a budgeting perspective, I can see that the SSD drive on a self-checkout, for example, is, is it only, it's only gonna get older, right? It has a limited number of rights to it. But exactly. I can see that across the enterprise and see where that's going. And, and instead of, spending money to fix it i can see it i can plan for it i know that it's coming and i can continue to ask other questions you know exactly. data is is a, a gold mine right you you can right. you can ask other questions of of that data well okay well I'm, i need to go replace the drives well you know maybe that's not the best use of my money maybe i really need to go get the latest model of the self-checkout or whatever it is and the drives included because it's really time so you can make better financial decisions uh for your environment um and, and make sure that you're not kind of nickel and diming it oh well, today i'm going to do this the, the, the ssd and tomorrow i'm going to do the monitor i can kind of look at that holistically so i think there's some, some other advantages for for the, the organization to, to use that data um, that we're providing out of paths as well Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Mike, for taking us through those services and wall-to-wall -wall and, and everything else that goes into our solution. So, team, I want to kind of just touch upon what our hardware portfolio looks like in case you're not familiar with what's the what offerings are from Toshiba Global Commerce Solutions. So, we have a full line of hardware that's available here. In the upper left is our all-in-one TCX810. That's our premium all-in-one system. Uh, you can use it, get it with a dual hinge stand, or you can get it with no stand and do it as a pole mounted solution. It's a very flexible one. Multiple um, processor choices sell around i3, i5, and i7. The TCX900 is our brand new distributed model, just introduced last month in July. Uh, it'll be generally available here September 6th. It's a power mo powerful modular system with 13th generation processors from Intel. We also have single and dual station printers, which really round out the entire point of sale experience for customers. But you know, as we were talking here earlier, we also have the ProX hybrid kiosk for those customers that want a kiosk in their grocery locations to enable uh, ordering on site. 
We also have self-checkout systems. So our self-checkout system seven is a personalized customer-centric solution that will allow people to uh, scan their own items, bag them, uh, be able to pay whatever fashion they would like. And then Jeremy, as you were mentioning earlier here, you know, mobile ordering and line busting, we've got a device available with our mobile operations manager software that really allows for a holistic view of all of the store activities. So with that team, I just kind of want to wrap up here. I want to thank Jeremy and, and Michael for the time of going through this presentation with me. You know, Toshiba, we're delivering retail success every day. We're working with grocers, we're working with restaurants, grocerants, working in general merchandise. We want to be able to bring a strategic mix of solutions and innovations for our customers. And we, you know, have greatly appreciated and uh, enjoyed the close partnership that we have with Custom Business Solutions and their North Star application. And we would, you know, be happy to talk in more detail. Uh, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, we'll be at some events here coming up here, and you can see that on the slide. So, Summer, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for a little Q&A. Absolutely. We did have a few questions that came in as well. Um, I know that there was one person who had asked for some um, follow-up contact information from everyone. Um, they said it was a fantastic presentation, so thank you so much for the, the comments. Um, but they did also have a question. Uh, we have, can you name a few specific issues that retailers have experienced when selling prepare, prepared foods? You good with me taking that, Steve? Sure, go ahead. I, I mean, I think it, we talked about it earlier. I think, Summer, it's one of those, um, and to our audience, guys, it's it's understanding that that prepared foods are not groceries. They're not, you know, they 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 have they're a living, breathing organism that the guests are going to want something. They're going to want pizza with light sauce. They're going to want, you know, fried chicken, and they're going to want the the mashed potatoes instead of the the French fries that come with it. They're going to want to engage, whether it be with the salad bar, with the they don't want a one size fits all type of environment. While I would encourage any grocers that don't have those one size fits all at a minimum, but if you really want to get into this customization and capabilities, understand that that just creates a level of guest satisfaction that you can't get with a one size fits all. And so you've got to have technology that can support that because if you can't, ultimately you end up giving away the extra avocado that goes on the sandwich because you're not ringing up the avocado that goes on the sandwich. If you're making it to order and you don't have tech that can charge the extra dollar for the avocado, you get stuck. And so th those are the things that, that we've seen that people don't consider. They know when they go into a Jimmy John's that they can add you know, cheese to it and it's gonna cost them an extra dollar for the cheese. But when they come to the grocery store, they don't, you know, the grocers don't necessarily consider that. And I think it's one of those things in a prepared foods world that you've got to get to a place where, where you understand that and you have tech enablement to allow the guests to do that. Yeah, and let me just add on that, Jeremy. You know, just in time manufacturing, we talk about that in, in a lot of different technology industries, is being able to just be able to have the right parts and pieces in place so you can go ahead and build something very quickly. It's the same with prepared foods, right? If you know you're having a mobile order come in, you want to make sure you have all of those ingredients on hand to be able to put that together, that sandwich together or whatever it is, you know, maybe it's maybe it's a pound of macaroni salad or whatever, and you have that prepared, you know, ahead of time that you can just scoop out and put it in a, in a container and be able to put a barcode on it and be able to scan it. And that very quickly can be done. But if, you know, to Jeremy's point, if you don't have the technology to help manage that on a day-to-day -day basis, it makes it that much harder for, you know, the, the grocer on to be able to satisfy the customer need. Yeah, one other thing that I would throw at people, Summer, is, is most people in a, if when they're first embarking on prepared foods, is they don't um, recognize things like run rates. In the grocery store, the back office is going to tell them how many tomatoes that they need to have on the shelf and how much, but when you start to prepare those things and pull them together, they need to understand how many turkey sandwiches they need to have. So how many loaves of bread do they need to make at the bakery to make those turkey sandwiches on a daily basis? Putting in technology that can tell you what your forecast is for a Tuesday at lunch is critical to, again, ensuring that you can have that turkey sandwich available and ready for them when they want it. Exactly. Very nice. Um, we also have another question here. 
doesn't Toshiba offer a mobile offering that can now offer line busting and outside of the store offerings? We are coming to market here very shortly with a hardware solution that uh, will enable us to do that. Um, I don't I believe we've made the announcement here just recently. It's it's a product line for somebody else in the organization. It's not my product, so I'm trying to do this out of rote memory here. But um, I believe uh, availability will be in the December timeframe for shipping. So I would just say stay tuned for additional information from Toshiba about all the details for that particular product. All right, very good. Um, we have another one here. What are some of the typical margin stacks that grocerants have seen? So from a prepared foods perspective, um, your gross margins outside of labor, which is a totally different, you know, your gross margins on the product itself are often somewhere in the 25 to 30 percent, you know, even when you calculate in all of the costs that are on those things and oftentimes can go even higher depending upon the menu mix. Um, and, and by menu mix, if you're selling steak dinners, it's a different conversation than if you're selling sandwiches and fried chicken. And so, um, but you're talking some places are upwards of 60% gross margins on those products, which I can tell you in talking to grocers, there's very few products inside of the grocery store that are at 60% gross margin. And so how do we sell more sandwiches at 60% gross margin? And again, some of it also depends on their supply chain and how much of the product are they getting from inside of the store versus how much are they having it come in and already made you know if they're buying bread from a wholesaler and having it brought in versus making it in the bakery it's a different conversation so that that helps but there's some grocers that we've talked some, some restaurants that we've talked to that are in the 60 to 70 percent gross margin areas on certain products which is insane when you think yeah. about it all right uh we have another one here it says what are some of the workflow efficiencies that retailers have experienced after installing POS solutions? You see a lot of workflow um, efficiencies really depending on how you design your systems, right? So we have self-checkout systems. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about system seven. They're a little bit, you know, more and more people are you get a double-edged opinion on this. They either hate self-checkout or they love it, right? And you don't really find people in the in the middle there. And you know, a lot of retailers, a lot of restaurants, you know, labor issues are facing everybody, right? So you know, it's hard to find employees and reliable employees. People who want to stay for a long period of time, depending on you know the salaries that these people are playing. So. What we try to do, Toshiba, is we work with those restaurants and really identify their, their, you know, their flow within the store itself. You know, do we need to put more uh, point of sale systems at the front? Do we need to put them back where the food ordering is? Do we need to put a kiosk here? We really look at the footprint of the store itself to see where the efficiencies can be gained. You know, we may even recommend a, a redesign of the of the floor plan based off of you know traffic identification and how to make it more efficient so that people can pick up more items and actually check out with more items. So it's kind of a it's kind of a broad question, Summer, in the sense that you know there's a lot of different ways you can crack that nut, and it really you know takes our specialists. You know, we have our services team, we have um, you know consultants that go out there and help work with that. We've got our solution architect team that will help design the right solution for a cruiser on. And, you know, we work with Jeremy's team quite frequently on making sure that we have the right solution. And, and that not only, in, you know, encases the hardware, but any software that will help support that business. Anything that they are doing from an ordering or a inventory management perspective, you know, we want to make sure that we, we have the right solution out there for those people that want to make sure that they um, manage their, their workflow so that it's, uh, it's a better and more efficient solution for them. I, I would add one thing to that, Summer, is just, we talked about that experience with the deli counter earlier in our conversation where they were queuing up with, you know, dozens of people standing at the deli counter those types of workflow things just change the because they don't even they didn't even know to ask about a piece right. of technology that could, that could solve that problem. And so you look at where those sticking points are within, especially the food service operation, and go, okay, 
why does Subway walk you through the line versus Jimmy John's that, you know, that you order and now you go sit down and they bring the food. And again, I'm not saying that one is right versus the other is right. It's really, what do you want your guest experience to be? And if, as you start to understand what that guest experience needs to look like, you absolutely can change the way and the throughput that you have from a workflow perspective by putting technology at the front side and the back side. You know, we've all been to restaurants where we stand and then they, they, they don't ring it up till the end. We've all been out to places where you ring it up and then the food gets delivered to you or it texts you or your number gets called and you go pick it up. And so again, back to the guest experiences, what are you looking to do? And now how does technology enable you to do what you as a brand, what your executive's vision is for the future of that, that brand? Absolutely. Thank you. There's a couple of things too from a hardware perspective that, that the A I've seen in you know out in the wild. Um, I think our, our hardware solutions are are very flexible, right? And and we we can do many things. So I may want you know looking and, and evaluating what's happening at that store, at that at the grocery store. Do I need exit lanes? Do I need belted lanes? Do I you know do, do I need kind of the, the kiosk? Do I need um, uh, you know, a, a system seven and, and, and the, the flexibility of the hardware itself is key because if I walk into a, a self-checkout area, right, it's kind of a corral area and I've got really right hand and left hand self-checkouts and, and it can be very simple things, but from a customer perspective, it irritates me when I don't have the, the workflow from taking something out of my basket, scanning an item and putting it into my cart. And I almost have to do it backwards because they didn't go to the, to the extreme of ensuring that that workflow for each and every lane works right. And, and I think that's where, um, you know, what we're providing is maybe is a little bit different um, from a hardware perspective. So I want to kind of throw that in there as well. Alrighty. Well, we have hit our three, three o'clock time here. <laughs> But um, I just want to thank everyone again so much for for joining our webinar today, and a, a absolute huge thank you to uh, Toshiba and to CBS North Star for putting on this really interesting, fascinating presentation. Um, I, you know, someone commented and said that it was a great presentation with a lot of useful information, and I second that. It was it was very informative, and I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to use this information going forward. So. Again, I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you very much, Summer. Thank you, Jeremy and Michael, for joining me today. Take care.